One of my favorite coaster YouTubers is Airtime Thrills, and one of my favorite types of videos that he puts out every year are his winners and losers of the year. In those videos, he talks about the coasters that exceeded or fell short of his expectations. That made me want to do something similar for the coasters I wrote in 2023. Instead of calling this video the winners and losers, I've decided to call it the surprises and disappointments. Even though the name is different, the style of this video is the exact same as what Airtime Thrills does, and I will be alternating between disappointments and surprises throughout this video. Before I get into the 10 surprises and disappointments, I have some honorable mentions. First, there's Wild Eagle Dollywood. I got four rides over the summer, front and back on each wing. My front row rides were really solid, but my back row rides were not that intense. I can't make heads or tails out of this, so that's why it's an honorable mention. The same thing can be said about El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. This is a coaster that I had no idea what I'd think about it. It was coming off an extensive refurbishment after the accident it had last year, and I was wondering how it rode. Much like Wild Eagle, my front row ride was excellent, but my ride in the back wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be. Because those two rides felt like they canceled each other out, El Toro is just an honorable mention. Finally, we actually have a coaster at my home park, Boss, at Six Flags St. Louis. This coaster ran very inconsistent for me this year. Some days it ran incredible, some days it was lackluster, and some days it was a bit of both. I'm honestly starting to wonder if it's still my favorite coaster at this park or not, but it often proves me wrong, so I can't include it as an official entry. Here's a few more coasters that barely missed each list, and I'll briefly mention each of those. For surprises, there's Thunderhead at Dollywood, Prowler at Worlds of Fun, Aries Alpine Coaster at Aries Resort and Winery, and Rookie Racer at Six Flags St. Louis. For disappointments, there's Medusa at Six Flags Great Adventure, Hydra the Revenge at Dorney Park, Lightning Racer at Hershey Park, and Banshee at Kings Island. Now, let's kick off the top 10 for each list. My number 10 disappointment was Fahrenheit at Hershey Park. This weird intimate coaster is kind of like a Gerstlauer Infinity Coaster. The closest thing I would compare Fahrenheit to is Hangtime at Knott's Berry Farm. This is the only Gerstlauer Infinity Coaster I've ridden, and I found that to be disappointing as well. I would much rather ride Fahrenheit over Hangtime because the drop and inversions were way better. Plus, there was actually good airtime on that camelback, and I didn't get any notable forces on Hangtime. Seeing as some people seem to hype up Fahrenheit quite a bit, I was expecting a bit more from it, and that's why it's a disappointment for me. It's only number 10 on this list since it wasn't as underwhelming as several others on this list. My number 10 surprise is Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Over Georgia. My first B&M flying coaster is definitely an underrated one. When I revisited Six Flags Over Georgia as part of my last minute southeast trip back in June, my ride on Superman was probably my favorite coaster ride of the whole day. I'd even say it was one of my favorite rides the whole trip too. I don't know what it was about it, but I had so much more fun on it this time around compared to my rides in 2017 and 2021, and both of those were great too. Thanks to Goliath being closed on me this year, Superman was the best B&M I rode at Six Flags Over Georgia, and it deserves a spot in my top 10 surprises for the year. My number 9 disappointment is Racer at Kings Island. I never thought I'd say this, but for the first time ever, Racer has fallen outside my top three coasters at Kings Island. This coaster is in a very similar position as Superman Ultimate Flight, but in the opposite way. While Superman felt way more fun than usual this year, my 2023 rides on Racer felt like it was missing something. I still got some racing rides and had fun on it, but I wonder if riding Racer at Kennywood a month prior spoiled it for me. It pains me to include Kings Island Racer on the list, but I just wasn't feeling it this time. The only reason why Racer is only at number nine is because it's still my top five at the park, and it's my second favorite wind coaster there. My number nine surprise is Possessed at Dorney Park. I'm a sucker for launch coasters and Possessed is no exception. However, in a park with a Morgan Hypercoaster and Steel Force and two unique B&M loopers with Talon and Hydra the Revenge, I thought I would like all those more than Possessed. I was wrong about that, as Possessed ended up being my second favorite ride in the park after Steel Force. This intimate impulse coaster pulled some very solid forces on the two spikes and had the exhilaration on the launches. There have been rumors about this coaster getting removed for a while now, and if those end up being true, I'll be sad about it, because despite being a clone, Possessed offers a different ride experience compared to everything else at Dorney Park. Who knows, maybe it'll be like Wicked Twister where my last ever ride on this intimate impulse was a Zen ride. Based on my one ride, Possessed is number nine for biggest surprises of the year for me. My number eight disappointment is Jackrabbit at Kennywood. I hate to knock another classic wooden coaster, but Jackrabbit didn't live up to the hype that people gave it. Even though I did ride the very back row, the double down was super disappointing. Granted, my first back row ride was in the morning when the park first opened, and it was an empty train. I figured the ride was just running slow at that point, so I figured I'd come back later. I tried the back row again later that afternoon, and it honestly felt the same as my ride in the morning. I also got a front row ride right after my first back row ride, the double down wasn't that good up there either. I'm gonna be completely honest, I much prefer the drop off the turnaround next to the boss's lift hill on Screaming Eagle at Six Flags St. Louis over Jackrabbit's Double Down. On top of the Double Down being overrated, the ride meandered a lot, and that's why it takes the number 8 spot on the disappointment list. This may be controversial, but Jackrabbit was by far the weakest wooden coaster at Kennywood, as I much preferred Thunderbolt and Racer over it. My number 8 surprise is The Beast at Kings Island. Finally, we actually have a classic wooden coaster that really surprised me this year. The Beast was not running great for me in 2022, as the track work it got made the ride feel less intense than my rides in 2020 and 2021. Those 2022 rides made me worried that the Beast would never have the same bite it had in recent years, but I heard it was running exceptionally well this year. After getting seven rides on it back in August, I can confirm that the Beast was back to how I remembered it being in 2020 and 2021. The laterals on the Helix were just as wild as I remember them before the track work, and the rest of the ride was insanely smooth with great speed and really strong laterals. I think the Beast is more than worthy of a spot on this list, but I can't put it higher than number eight because some other coasters surprised me more than this one. My number seven disappointment is Talon at Dorney Park. I heard good things about this B&M member going in, as some have called it super underrated. 
I didn't know the layout for Talon, so I was excited to give it a try. My hopes for it dropped a bit when I saw most of the layout for the first time in person. It looked very similar to Patriot at Worlds of Fun, and that's one of the weakest being on members I've written. I was still hopeful that the ride would prove to be really good. Due to the weather not looking good for a lot of the day I had at Dorney Park, I was in a hurry to get the credits there, so I was only able to get two morning rides on Talon. I rode the front row and the back row, and I was not impressed at all with this ride. The turn at the end was really good, but the rest of it felt like Patriot. Hopefully next time I'll be able to get some better rides on Talon, but for now, I have to call it a disappointment based on my experience, so it takes the number seven spot. My number seven surprise is Powder Keg at Silver Dollar City. Talk about a hidden gem. In a park that has both Outlaw Run and Time Traveler, Powder Keg gets overlooked. With the exception of my second row ride this summer being underwhelming, each of my front row rides have always been great. I got 10 rides on Powder Keg this year, and the one thing that stood out to me was how good the airtime was. I don't remember the airtime being anywhere near as good in the past. The airtime hill after the launch, and the airtime hill after that one gave some really sustained airtime. And the Twisted Hill before the final breaks gave some lateral airtime, which was excellent. Outside the airtime moments hitting harder than I remembered this year, the laterals were also strong. The launch was just as powerful as I remembered too. My first front row ride this year and that aforementioned row 2 ride didn't have the same bite, but my other 8 rides solidified this coaster as one of the 10 biggest surprises of 2023 for me. So that's why Powder Cake takes number 7 on the surprises list. My number 6 disappointment is Flying Turns at Knobles. I will admit, getting to actually ride this coaster was a surprise as I've heard it's rarely open. Unfortunately, my on-ride experience with this coaster was not very good. I only got one ride on it and I was assigned the front row at first, but due to the way the train needed to be balanced out, I had to sit in the middle car of the three car train. This disappointed me, as not only was my view of the track obstructed, and that's something I actually really liked about La Vibora at Six Flags Over Texas, but it also felt like the middle car wasn't going as high up the side of the trough. Like I said, getting to actually ride flying turns was a surprise in of itself, and I'm thankful that I actually got it on at first try. That's why it's at number six and not higher, and I think it would have ranked quite a bit higher if it wasn't so hard to get on. My number six surprise is Flight of Fear at Kings Island. I feel like I've enjoyed this coaster a lot more than other enthusiasts. I love the intense ride experience in the dark, even though it's usually not the smoothest. I say usually because in previous years, especially in 2022, the train was shuffling a significant amount during the ride. This year, however, Flight of Fear was the smoothest I've ever seen it run. The shuffling wasn't anywhere near as bad as I remembered, and the intensity was still there. On top of that, I got a lights on ride, and I forgot how insane the head choppers were. In 2019, I rode one of its outdoor clones in Poltergeist at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, and riding Flight of Fear with the lights on reminded me of that, even though Poltergeist did not have a mid course while Flight of Fear did. I personally didn't mind that though, as I'm used to it after riding it nine times between 2020 and 2023. The smoothness is the main thing that puts Flight of Fear at number six, but the lights on ride was an added bonus. My number five disappointment is Comet at Hershey Park. Before I went to Hershey Park, I heard a good number of people hyping up Comet as one of the best rides in the park. I heard the airtime was really good, and as a PTC wooden coaster with buzz bars, I had high expectations for Comet. I only got one ride in the front row, and I'm not sure if it was just a bad ride or not, but I didn't get any airtime whatsoever. It was still smooth, but it had no force to it. While Comet was hyped up to be a top five coaster at Hershey Park, it doesn't even make my top ten there because there are several other coasters in Hershey Park's solid lineup that I enjoyed more. I considered giving it another try in the back row, but I I had to decide between that or another ride on Wildcat's Revenge, which I think you know which one I chose. I'll give Comet a try in the back next time I go to Hershey Park, and maybe I'll be more impressed with it, but as of now, it's in my top five disappointments of 2023. Unfortunately, Comet was just announced to be getting new trains with PTC lap bars instead of buzz bars, so now I'm not sure if it'll move up as much whenever I go back to Hershey Park, but I'm still optimistic. My number five surprise is Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags over Georgia. I had ridden this coaster twice before this year, with one ride coming in 2017 and another in 2021. I don't remember my 2017 ride, but my 2021 ride was brutally rough. I said it was one of the worst coasters I had ever ridden because of how awful it was. I also didn't get any airtime on it since the roughness caused the lap bar to staple me. It got some track work before the 2023 season, and I was wondering if this would improve the ride. Seeing as it was a surprise for me this year, it's safe to say that the track work did improve the ride. It was remarkably smooth, and I even got some airtime on it. Great American Scream Machine is no longer one of the worst coasters I've ridden, and it got a massive bump in my list, making it an easy choice to put in the top five surprises of 2023. My number four disappointment is Green Lantern at Six Flags Great Adventure. This B&M stand-up coaster is polarizing among enthusiasts, with lots of people hating it and others calling it underrated. I was worried I wouldn't like it, as I'm normally not a huge fan of stand-up coasters because of how painful they often are. However, I got an awesome pain-free ride on Georgia Scorcher around a month prior, and I figured I'd try and replicate how I rode that while on Green Lantern. Needless to say, that didn't work, as the whole ride was still unpleasant. The positives in the first half were extremely uncomfortable, and the second half was full of headbanging despite riding defensively. I thought it was as bad as Vortex at Carowinds, which seems to have a much more negative perception than Green Lantern. I originally had Green Lantern in my top three disappointments of 2023, but I have decided to move it down to number four. My number four surprise is Afterburner Carowinds. I heard really good things about it before I first wrote it in 2022. It was considered by many as the most intense BNM ever out there, and some even called it the very best. With a reputation like that, my expectations for Afterburner were really high. I was even expecting it to be my number two invert after Montu. I got two rides on Afterburner in 2022, and it was not as intense as advertised. My ride up front was especially disappointing, and my ride in the back wasn't much better. I knew that Afterburner likely wasn't running at its best potential based on those two rides, and I thought it would be well before I got to give it another try. Fast forward to my last minute Southeast trip this year, where I found myself 
back at Carowinds for part of it. Since I was back there sooner than expected, I was really excited to see if Afterburn would redeem itself. I still have pretty high expectations for it since I knew my 2022 reds weren't what it runs like for others. Let me just say, Afterburn absolutely brought it this year. Each element had me graying out hard, and I was amazed at how well it was running. Even though my four rides this year were in practically empty trains since three of them were right after Carowinds opened in the morning and one of them was a front row zen ride in the evening, it somehow felt so much more intense than my rides in 2022, even though the temperature was about the same. I don't know why it was so much better this year compared to last year, but Afterburn went from my number four at Carowinds to my number two there. It's also in my top three band of members now. It doesn't come anywhere near Montu, but I think it's better than Banshee for my number two member now. The only reason why Afterburn couldn't break into the top three is because my expectations for the coasters in my top three were way lower than my expectations for Afterburn, and the top three greatly exceeded them more than Afterburn did for me in 2023. My number three disappointment is Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure. Sorry, Great Adventure. I gotta knock another coaster at your park. However, I feel like I personally screwed up with this one. I only got two rides on Nitro, and both of them were in the morning. As you can expect, I didn't get any airtime on it since it was running slow. I was honestly expecting Nitro to be a top three to four B&M hyper for me. I knew it wouldn't be Mako or even Diamondback, but I thought it had a shot at being Goliath at Six Flags over Georgia for my number three spot. Even though I wasn't able to ride Goliath this year with it being closed, it's safe to say that I would have enjoyed it way more, as Nitro ended up being the second weakest B&M hyper I've ridden. The only one worse than it is Raging Bull. The Helix on Nitro was the only element that I was impressed by, but I much prefer the Helix on Goliath. I know I should have given Nitro another shot later in the day, and that's one of my biggest regrets from this year, honestly, not trying it later in the day. Based on my two rides and how my expectations fell flat, though, I have to put it in the top three for biggest disappointments of the year. My number three surprise is Nighthawk at Carowinds. This coaster was closed for me during my 2022 trip, but I heard nothing but negative things about this coaster, so I feel like I wasn't missing anything. I got to get on this coaster during my 2023 trip, and it was my first Vekoma Flying Dutchman. Given the negative reputation this coaster had, I was extremely nervous going in, and I was expecting it to be the worst coaster in the park, even more so than the aforementioned Vortex. However, I was blown away by Nighthawk, and it ended up being in my top five in the park. It was also surprisingly smooth, although that might have been because I was in the front row. I also enjoyed the flying experience, and that vertical loop was so much better than I expected. Here's a hot take for you. I prefer the vertical loop on Nighthawk over every pretzel loop I've experienced on the B&M flying coasters. I would have probably gone for a second ride if the line wasn't so long, but my one ride on Nighthawk was outstanding, and it breaks into the top three surprises for this year. My number two disappointment is Mystic Timbers of Kings Island. This is a controversial take for a lot of you, but I've never been a big fan of this GCI. I've ridden it all over the train between 2020 and 2022, holding up the lap bar and not holding it up in the airtime has always been lacking. I was really frustrated with this ride not delivering the airtime everyone says it has. 2023 was pretty much the final straw. I did actually get a good airtime on two of my rides this year, but it wasn't enough to compensate for the other 17 lackluster rides I've had. After getting great rides on all the other major coasters at Kings Island, Mystic is now my least favorite of them, given how disappointed I've always been. I know it has potential to be really good since Prowler is my top GCI, and that is a very similar layout. After getting nine more rides on Prowler this year, I realized that it always gave the insane airtime that everyone says Mystic Timbers had. With several other coasters at Kings Island, I don't get why everyone goes nuts over Mystic, calling it the best ride in the park, or even the best GCI. This is definitely one of the biggest letdowns of the year, and definitely the biggest letdown for coasters that got free rides on. I said this in the past, and I'll say it again here. Prowler is a GCI that everyone should go nuts over, not Mystic Timbers. My number two surprise is Skyrush at Hershey Park. I bet you were surprised to see this one on the list, seeing as tons of other people love Skyrush. I was not expecting to like it at all, as all I heard was that the restraints were the worst of any coaster, making the ride completely unenjoyable. To my surprise, I actually like Skyrush. Don't get me wrong, the restraints were bad. I know several people say they're fine, that's not the case for me, as I think they are probably the worst ones out there. It's either that or Zambezi Zinger. However, I can still ride Skyrush multiple times, however, the main reason why it doesn't take the number one spot besides the restraints is because the ride was way too much for me. The first drop in the back row was extremely uncomfortable, and each of the elements were so aggressive that I couldn't ride Skyrush more than twice in a row in the morning. I wish I had the same restraints that Velocicoaster had, as I think those would make the ride much better. Keeping all this in mind, it's my third favorite ride at Hershey Park after Storm Runner and Wildcat Revenge. It's nowhere near the top ride in the park or in the state for me, but Skyrush was an easy choice to put at number two for biggest surprises of the year for me. If you're someone who really likes Skyrush, and I know a lot of you do, all I ask is that you be glad I enjoyed it for what it is, even though it's nowhere near one of my favorites. My number one disappointment was Joker at Six Flags Great Adventure. SNS free spins are my least favorite coaster model. Each subsequent one I've ridden has been so much worse than the previous. This particular one is the only one that made me fear I was actually going to be knocked unconscious. Not in a good way like Intimidator 305, but in a way that actually felt dangerous. The ride was flipping so much, which I hated, and the more I flip on free spins, the more I dislike it. I think I flipped eight times. Despite stapling myself, my head kept violently slamming against the headrest due to the extremely jerky movement of the seat I was in. I couldn't even see straight for at least 20 minutes afterwards, and I almost passed out on the brake run because of how bad I was hurting from it. I've never felt like I was actually in danger of being severely injured on any other coaster. Not Mind Blower, not Kumba, only this one. Because of that, Joker's the only coaster I could put at number one for biggest disappointments of 2023. My number one surprise was Mystery Mine of Dollywood. Lots of people seem to not enjoy this coaster, and I would have been in that same position as those people if I'd only ridden it once. My first ride on Mystery Mine would have had it on the list of disappointments. However, the ride's second half was amazing, and was worth rewriting just for that. I enjoyed my second ride a lot more than my first, and after my first trip to Dollywood this year, I actually started to miss the ride because of how fun my second ride was. Once I found out I would be going back to Dollywood during my 
last minute Southeast trip back in June, I was so excited to get back on Mystery Mine, even more so than Lightning Rod. I will admit, the first half isn't overly exciting and actually quite janky, but the jankiness added to the experience for me. That being said, it's no match for the second half, which starts as soon as the train enters the building with the second left hill. You hear several crows causing a ruckus, and then a caged canary is illuminated a few seconds later, only for it to fall forward, signifying it's dead. Once that happens, you know things are about to get serious. As the ominous music that plays inside this building, along with the projection at the top of the second lift, build the anticipation for Mystery Mind's phenomenal finale. This started off with a fire effect that represents a dynamite explosion. This took me by surprise the first time I wrote it since it was a lot closer to the track than I was expecting. The 95 degree drop that immediately follows was demented since it turns to the right while the train was beyond vertical. This was by far the best drop at Dollywood in my opinion. Finally, the double inversion finale is world class. The Heartland roll felt like a miniature version of the Mosasaurus roll on Velocicoaster, and the dive loop is the best I've experienced with that inversion time due to the hang time I got. Both really are top tier inversions. Every time I rode Mystery Mine, the whole experience kept getting better. I even marathoned it five times in a row in the last 30 minutes the park was open on my second trip because it was a walk-on. That, and also because Lightning Rod at Big Bear Mountain had much longer lines. I know what you're probably thinking, dude, Thunderhead is just on the pathway, why didn't you go ride that? I know that's considered by many as a top two coaster in the park, but I actually prefer Mystery Mine for how weird it is. Excluding Blazing Fury and Whistle Punk Chaser, several people called Mystery Mine the worst coaster at Dollywood, even behind the family coasters like Fire Chaser Express. I personally couldn't disagree more. Mystery Mine is one of the most underrated coasters I've ever ridden, and is by far the most underrated ride at Dollywood. While Sky Rush didn't exactly get better with each ride from my experience, Mystery Mine did, and that makes it an easy choice for the biggest surprises of 2023. Those are the 10 biggest surprises and disappointments of 2023 for me. What were your biggest surprises and disappointments of the year? I'm intrigued to know if you thought the same about any coaches I discussed in this video, or if your experience on any of them contradicted mine. Post any thoughts you have about either of those topics in the comments section. Of course, before you click off this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to comment what you enjoyed about this video, and be sure to share it with someone else you may know. If you're new to this channel like we saw, please consider subscribing for more content like this. I'd appreciate you subscribing and turn the bell on so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit a park, so be sure to check me out there as well via the link in the description. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you later. Thank you